Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. We're ready to get cracking in our Father's Word. Proverbs, what are they? Rules. That's what the word means. What kind of rules? Rules that <clears throat> tell you how to be successful, prosperous, how in both your, with your government, with your religion, and um, in, in business, how to be successful in business. And you know something? It's God's word. It always works. If you have the, if you're not biblically illiterate and you understand our Father's word, greater wisdom was never released to man than is written in the Proverbs in the book of Ecclesiastes as far as finding peace of mind while you're in these flesh bodies. And with that having been said, let's get right into the rules. Uh, chapter 21, verse 18, and remember the subject of this is personal conduct, or rather probably personal character to give you wisdom on how your character should be. Verse 18, and it reads of chapter 21, the wicked shall be ransom for the righteous and the transgressor for the upright. In other words, that's a little peek, if you would, forward to the great white throne judgment when the wicked, though they think they have it so great now, it's a swappy swappy. It's the righteous that will have it so good, and the wicked will have a one-way ticket. It's up to them. It's up to any individual. You have total freedom of choice, and if you choose to be wicked, hey, have a good trip. It's not going to last too much longer, so you better enjoy it while you can. And for the righteous, if you want the eternity, it's your choice. And everybody should do what makes them happy. All right? Verse 19. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. Now, right away I will say, or angry man. It works either way. And it is sad. Uh, you have a miserable life indeed if, if you are tied with a mate that's angry about everything. Righteous indignation, hey, that, a little of that occasionally is real good for you. You know, get your little steam off the old boiler and and uh, against the wicked, whatever form that might be. But everyone, there's no one perfect, certainly, and everyone loses their temper occasionally, but work on it. It's, um, your family is probably the most valuable thing, it isn't probably, it is the most valuable thing you have. So don't lose it. Hang on to it, work with it. As long as you can keep your family in a position where it's pliable clay, it can, be sh it can be shaped. But once it bakes into hard clay, then it crumbles. So be careful and remember that. Um, verse 20, in other words, it's very childish to, to um, be angry or contentious and angry, argumentative, the spirit of... Uh, of um, argument when it falls on someone. Get rid of it, it's terrible. Verse 20, there is a treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. He can't quite seem to fill the oil barrel and oil was a, a necessity, he always has been. Um, considered, by, and, and treasure, a, a wise person uh, can he knows how to earn those things and to hang on to them but a foolish man uh, he spendeth it up he blows it he'll buy things on interest whereby he pays double what everybody else does hey have a good trip you know if you want to pay double what everybody else pays have to it it's, you're the one that makes the choice now all of us at times to have transportation or something of that nature must finance an automobile. Nothing wrong with borrowing money to make money. That is to say, but always know what you're doing. 
don't mind ever wading into the water, but make sure your planning has been planned where you're not going in over your ankles. Your ship is going to float. Otherwise, you have no business going into um, business or whatever. And let me tell you, my, my old granddad had a very wise saying concerning this sort of thing. If you can't afford it, you don't need it. Think about it. Verse 21. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. He that... Um, Mercy, of course, is love in a sense, okay? Uh, one that, uh, that has, seeks after righteousness and kindness, mercy, being kindness and love, um, findeth life. In other words, you're going to find eternal life, not the pit. And naturally, um, righteousness, mercy, uh, brings forth honor. You're going to have it if you have those things. 22. A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. In other words, a wise man, that is to say, using your head, common sense, and planning can bring down a well-fortified city if he uses his head right. Now, and you know, a, a, um, just popping into my mind in 2 Samuel chapter 20, there was a wise woman there that actually brought this to pass. To show, to show you there is no gender in these things, lest when I say that applies to men and women both, I'm going to just take, we'll just take a little time. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 20, you're not going to have this on your character generator. I, I, it just, I think you're going to enjoy it, though. The setting is this. David had been insulted. Uh, someone was after him, and Joab uh, had taken an army to this city, and they were about to, to uh, tear up Jake. By that I mean destroy it. Listen to this. 16. Then cried a wise woman, aha, not a wise man, but we've got a wise woman of this city. Now listen, then cried a wise woman out of the city, hear, hear, say I pray you unto Joab, come near hither that I may speak with thee. 17, and, and old Joab hearing this, when he, and when he was come near unto her, the woman said, art thou Joab? And he answered, I am he. Then she said unto him, Hear the words of thine handmaid. And he answered, I do hear. I'm listening. Verse 18. Then she spake, saying, They were wont to speak in old times, saying, They shall surely ask counsel at Abel. And so they ended the matter. In other words, um, the, she knew of this incident, and it's always wise to counsel and talk it over before, uh, uh, concerning a dispute. Verse 19, and she continues, I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. Thou seekest to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why wilt thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? Now, that's pretty wise. I mean, that's laying it out on the table before that hard old warrior. 20. And Joab answered and said, For be it, for be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. 21. The matter is not so. But a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba, the son of, um, of uh, Bikra, Bikra, I should say, by name, hath lifted up his hand against the king, even against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said unto Joab, Behold, his head shall be thrown to thee over the wall. Now that's wisdom. No need for the whole city to die. Um, 22, then the woman went unto all the people in her wisdom. She went in what? Wisdom. 
And they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of uh, Bechra, and cast it out to Joab, and he blew a trumpet. And they retired from the city, every man to his tent, and Joab returned to Jerusalem unto the king. So you see, there's no gender intended this. Wisdom is far better than death. Wisdom, that is to say, cautiously using common sense, many times will save you a great deal of trouble. Anger has no place mixing with wisdom aside from righteous indignation. So think about it. Think about it. This isn't the only case where a woman is saved today by using wisdom, nor man. There are certainly just as good an example of that. I just thought for a change uh, that scripture came to mind, we would jump right on it. So it is true. Uh, where there is an army of thousands about to tear a city up, one wise person can save a city by using wisdom. Verse 23, returning to chapter 21, the Proverbs. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. In other words, uh, a ratchet jaw, as we call them in this generation, they, get the, they cause their own trouble, talk themselves into a mess when if they had kept their mouth shut, nobody would have ever known they were stupid. All right? The way people are. Verse 24. Proud and uh, haughty, scorner, is his name, who dealeth in proud wrath. Now, of course, pride is, was the downfall of Satan. L let me work with this just a little bit, if I may, from the Hebrew. Proud, the proud and haughty scorner, uh, his name is the scoffer, okay? And uh, scoffer is his name. And really... What is a scoffer? A scoffer is one that scoffs at God. God doesn't take kindly to that. Uh, by that I mean that mocks uh, those that follow God's plan. That is to say with wisdom, scoff, ah, there's nothing to that. That's stupidity. And uh, certainly God frowns on that highly and will take vengeance upon that individual. That individual's in for a rough trip. Verse 25. The desire of the slothful, slothful, killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. Slothful means somebody's lazy. And a lazy person, it is his choice, it will ultimately kill him. Why? God doesn't like lazy people. And the chances of him making it into the eternity are slim. Uh, he's too lazy to do anything about uh, God's word, even after he accepts it, he's too lazy to get out and be a servant of God. That is to say, um, uh, serve him. He'd rather lay in bed, for his hands refuse to labor. This is why it's written in the New Testament in uh, chapter uh, 3 of Second Thessalonians, if a man won't work, don't feed him. And any time, I mean, everybody can get down on their luck, but if it's one of these long, continual drawing out things, don't feed him. If you want him to go to work, don't feed him, and guess what? When his navel gets real close to his backbone, he'll decide it's time to go to work. There's a built-in mechanism there that God has instilled in one that causes him to want to work, all right? Verse 20, that, this has nothing to do with the handicapped. We take care of the needy. Verse 26, he covereth greedily all the day long. That is to say, a person that uh, coveteth, rather. He's, he's envious, and he covets everything he's got. But the righteous giveth and spareth not. That is to say, uh, and covetousness and envy will bring this on you. Um, enjoy what you have, but don't turn it into a god and worship it. All right? And, and if you have a beautiful truth, always share it. Don't hide it under a bushel. Um, spare not. I mean, get out there and plant a seed and share the good news. 27. The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. Who is the sacrifice to? It's to God. If one of the wicked sacrifice something to God, to him, it's an abomination. He doesn't want it. Get him out of here. All right? 
how much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind. That is to say, especially when he does it um, with evil for an evil reason. And hey, listen, that old proverb, when you update it today, there are many people, I'm not judging them, hey, it's a free world, you get out there and do what you want to do. But a lot of people go to church in their community, especially the smaller communities, for only one reason. Especially if they're in business. I'll look better in the community if I attend church. Uh, many people to put themselves in a better light. If they, let's say that if they're in a child custody hearing, you can mark it, they will never go to church. But if they come near a, a hearing in court, they're going to be in church and have those children in church every time the door is open. That's an evil reason. And God doesn't like it. You will gain nothing from it. God hates a fake, all right? If you can't be honest with yourself, you can't be honest with him. Verse, you know, you got to realize a lot of people beg for membership. Have you ever heard me beg for membership? I'm not hard up for students, okay? And I'm going to teach this word the way it's written and try to leave myself and personalities out of it as best I can. And do you know why I am that way? Because that's the way our Father teaches us to be. You, you bring in a bad apple and you, brought, you messed up your whole congregation. Let God do the choosing and you do the best you can to serve God and you'll be a lot better off. 28. A false witness shall perish. Period. All right? But the man that heareth speaketh constantly. That, that is to say he speaks the truth constantly, meaning every time he speaks, it will be truth, and you, you can count on it. It's very good when in your community that the community is willing to take your word for something without having to put it on paper, that your word is good, honorable, and that if you say it, if you speak it, it's as good as a contract. And um, that, that is a, a good feeling, and I hope most of you were raised that way. That is from childhood, to protect your reputation, to make your word good, to be honest and to be truthful. It's, it's a great asset. And someone that is truthful, you can count on it constantly. That is to say, every time they speak, it's going to be truth. Verse 29, a wicked man hardeneth his face, but as for the upright, he directeth his ways. He directs his ways. The way, of course, is the path and the analogy that is being used. He thinks it out. He plans it. That's wisdom. That is using wisdom. Don't just jump in hastily and say, oh, well, I'll just take this way. Bam, you're off in the ditch. Think. Use your head. Use common sense. Verse 30. There is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord. I want to read that to you again. And many of you, in asking your questions I want uh, concerning, why does God let little children be abused? Why does God let this happen? Why did God do that to me? I want to read this to you specifically, you especially, again. 30. There is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord. Do you know why? God has given us the power and the authority over all of our enemies in Christ's name. He gave us rules. Let's just take the child abuse situation. And he has left instructions. For example, if somebody rapes a 13-year-old girl and murders her, take that sucker and hang him publicly. No waiting. As soon as you have the two witnesses, and, uh, and DNA serves as an excellent witness for this, kill him. Capital punishment. Send him to the father. Others will see, and these things will cease to happen. So why do we have children molested? We don't follow God's law. Deuteronomy 19 will answer that for you. 
uh, all of our problems we bring on ourselves. God doesn't bring them on. It's an insult to him for you to say, why does God do this? People do it to themselves. Don't try to blame your trip on God. He gave you free will. You make your own bed, so you sleep in it. If you want to sleep comfortable, use wisdom. And wisdom will see that you and your family are safe. It causes the Christian family in this generation, because of the violence and the fact that the law is not enforced, that you have to, within your domicile, within your casa, within your home, you have to enforce it yourself if there is ever an intruder. Always do it according to the law, but the law of most, most states allows you to, you, you're in charge of your home, do it. All right, don't let someone abuse your family. You don't have to. And you don't need a policeman to stop them if they're already in your home. You don't have time to call one anyway. You be prepared to do it yourself. If you have to, hire, the, hire a couple of brothers like Smith and Wesson to do your fighting for you if you have to. But always do it legal and right. But protect your family. I want to read it again. There is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord. He's perfect, and don't ever forget it. If there is a flaw, look at man, look at yourself, and you'll find it. 31, the horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Victory, this word would better translate from the Hebrew, victory is of the Lord. God gives us victories. He always has. If you're in good standing with him, you're going to have the victory. He can turn a bad day into a mighty good day. And if a bad day comes along, hey, we that really trust him and have wisdom, bring them on. If we have to plow a little deeper, we'll plow deeper. We're can-do type people. And you're not going to hear any whimpers or whinings. We can cut it because God has promised us we will always go through. So let a little rain fall in your life. You're not a hothouse lily. And with God's help, you're going to have the victory. And that makes the challenge all that much better. Just gives you something to make the day pass a little bit faster, is to have an interesting day. You sure don't have to worry about it. To worry is to doubt every promise of God. Chapter 22, verse 1, the subject... Um, a uh, personal character continues on until, if my memory doesn't fail me, about the 16th verse. And then we'll change gears just a little bit in the book of Proverbs. 22, 1, and it reads, A good name is, is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. That, that is to say, the loving grace, unmerited favor from God. Uh, well, why choose a good name over gold and silver? Gold and silver will make you happy. Don't ever kid yourself. It won't. And if you have a good name, it's not hard to get the gold and silver if you use wisdom. Well, I've never had any luck. Well, you probably haven't gone by Father's Word. You haven't used wisdom, or you would have. It's that simple, period. Verse 2. The rich and poor translate this needy and this is not a handicap this is really those that are needy meet together the Lord is the maker of them all now this is something you need to get down real good and we're not talking about someone that is rich with ill-gotten gains that's to say they've stole it they've peddled drugs and made it we're talking about people that are rich because of God's blessings and those that are really needy, in other words, they've got to hump it and they probably only live from paycheck to paycheck. Uh, and, um, but God is the maker of everyone. The rich man should not look down his nose at the needy, nor should especially the needy envy the rich man. Be thankful for him if he is rich because of the blessings of God. You're looking at a good person, not a bad person, because he's rich. And one that is rich has no problems making it into the kingdom of heaven if it's God's blessings that caused him to be rich. 
It's the ill-gotten gains or mammon of the world that will give you trouble. So the two, what it's saying is the two must live together because we have the same father. What that melts down to then in the bottom line is we're brothers. We're brothers and sisters. I don't care what scale, level, if you wish to look at it in that respect, you are. We are brothers and sisters. We have one father in common. Don't ever forget it. Verse 3. A prudent man, now what is a prudent man? A, man? a prudent man is one that cautiously uses common sense. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are, and are um, uh, punished. In other words, this word simple in the Hebrew means the unsuspecting. They don't know any better, why? Number one, they'd probably be biblically illiterate, and they're too busy looking at self to see which way and which path their family is headed into and, and senses instantly when trouble is ahead and thinks ahead of the situation. That's one that uses common sense. You can see it. You don't hide yourself from it. You just go around it, over it, under it, or through it. But you prepare yourself to be able to do that knowing you're going through. So don't be a simple person. That is to say someone that is biblically illiterate has no idea of prophecy of what next year brings, which I don't care what business you're in. If you're familiar with biblical prophecy, over, say, given a 10-year period of time, you can be much more successful knowing what's going to happen at least over a period of 10 years, you know how to be successful. It's that simple. That would be the wrong reason to become uh, biblically literate is for money, but it's part, it goes with the territory, okay? Uh, verse four, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches. Uh, this word fear translates revere, love. It should have been translated that way. And honor and life. Why? Why would it, by humility and the fear of the Lord or the loving of the Lord, are riches and honor and life? How, how could that possibly be? Because if you do that, he's promised you he's going to give you blessings. He's going to make good things happen for you. If you have the faith to believe that and using common sense, you're going to do all right. Even if a little smoke comes your way, you'll get through it. Trouble is like a puff of smoke to those that have faith. Can-do type people. Verse 5. Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward, the crooked. Those that are crooked, there's thorns and snares waiting at every corner. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Uh, well, just document to me that there's thorns and thistles uh, in the way of, uh, in, in all the way of the forward. Well, let's say he's a drug peddler. Every, every policeman that walks the beach looking for him, he's got snares out there, phone taps, uh, good communities that won't put up with uh, garbage. Somebody's always after him. He's like a rabbit being chased by hounds. He's not a happy person. There's snares all around for the crooked. So what's the, what is the advice? Don't be crooked. And you don't have to worry about it. It, it alleviates itself. Verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old... He will not depart from it. And really, if I were translating this, I'm going to share this with you. Probably I shouldn't. It reads pretty well the way it is, and the meaning is pretty well carried. But it is just a little bit, as far as I'm concerned, this is my opinion, it should really, really read, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not wish to depart from it. In other words, when he matures, and uh, uh, but uh, he can, some do depart from it at a time, but they always return to it. Seven, the rich ruleth over the poor. 
and the borrower is servant to the lender. What is the subject? What does it mean? Don't be, you don't want to be a servant to a lender. So don't borrow. That is to say, don't, be, don't entangle yourself in usury. It will eat you alive. You know, a lot of people, uh, the, the subject credit cards comes up occasionally and people, um, I mentioned that I use credit cards, but I, you know something? I never pay one cent interest on the credit cards I use because I don't buy something unless I know I'm going to write a check for it. It's simply a convenient way to transfer funds. A wise person never borrows money on a credit card anyway. That's what banks are for. Your interest rates at the bank are very low. Uh, on a credit card, some of them, it's 18, 20%. Do you know how much money that is? Do you have any idea how, what a burden you place on yourself? If you need money, go to a, a bar. I'm saying if you need it. If you can't afford something, you don't really need it. But I'm saying, well, the little kitties have got to get back to school and I need a few extra bucks, so I'm just going to run this on my credit card and run it over. Then figure the difference in about well, we'll say 10% and about 20. That's double, double interest you're paying. And I'm not knocking the card companies or anything else. I'm just giving you the facts of life, all right? Think, use your head. Verse eight, he that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, That's calamity. You're gonna reap calamity. Van uh, vanity is emptiness or nothing or trouble, okay? and the rod of his anger shall fail. Everything he's got will fail, verse nine. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Now, uh, here again, you have to be careful, you know, well, that means if he has an eye and he sees um, a poor man and he's got a, you know, a, what does that mean, poor? As I told you in the last lecture, there are about four Hebrew words that are translated poor, and you don't get the full meaning if you don't take your strongs and check it out. Now, if you check this out with your strongs concordance to find out what the Hebrew meaning of this word poor, you'll find it's handicapped. Now that makes a lot of difference. You'll have a lot of preachers that'll come up and say to you, well, you may be, you may be uh, entertaining an angel unaware, you know. Well, usually if it's uh, a preacher and he's having to go out and beg, I mean, put a label on him in your mind. He's a beggar. That's all he is, is a beggar. True men and women of God do not have to beg, period. God blesses them. Why? Because they use wisdom and they have those blessings. But what it is, God does expect us to take care of the, the Hebrew word is feeble, okay? Think about it, listen to it, let's read it right now. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the feeble. In other words, he takes care of the handicapped, verse 10. Cast out the scorner and contention shall uh, go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. Never put up with a troublemaker, okay? Now again, this word scorner, I wanna make sure you understand what that is, is one that's a scorner of God. One that really mocks and makes light of uh, the, the uh, divinity, that makes light of, of Christians that, uh, uh, has something really funny to say uh, and like, uh, get them away from you. They're nothing but trouble. Why? Because God is going to see that trouble uh, follows them because God's gonna stir the water around their boat. God doesn't like scorners. Verse 11, he that loveth pureness of heart 
for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. Uh, this means being translated one that uses honest integrity with courtesy. You're going to you're going to be all right. You're going to be in good shape with the ruler of your land. Why? Well, that's just nature. God created these old bodies, and He created the uh, souls that are in them. And if you use integrity, that means you're going to use wisdom. You're going to think. And then when you use um, courtesy along with that, people can't help liking you. Why? Because you're a nice person, all right? And never, never think that Christians have to compromise their uh, courtesy by standing against that that's evil. That's, uh, you are not supposed to show courtesy to that that is evil. You're supposed to stand for something, get a little starch in your backbone, and make a difference. Okay, you got that? The reason I say that, so many Christians think that they've got to be a walking mat for all other peoples. That's not true. Christians are not second-class citizens. We're God's children, and we set the course. All right, don't miss the next lecture. Bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please?